How's it going? Charles Botenston here from BPI. Today we're going to be talking about credit. All right. So it's one of those areas that you kind of come out of school and you sort of learn about and then you get your credit score back and you're like, why is my credit not that good? And uh, this is a couple of the reasons why we're going to go into why credit is important, why you actually have to build it up. Uh, obviously, there's a multitude of reasons. The first is actually when you first find out when you're going for a credit card, no pun intended, or there is a pun intended. Uh, when you're first going for your first credit card, when you're first renting your place and they say, we're gonna run your credit and you start thinking about, okay, what's in a credit score? How is that actually accumulated over time? You know, what are we looking at? You know, what's important? Is it the longevity? A lot of people talk about, obviously, not only the, the longevity of the credit, but what do you actually buy with that when you get a credit card and things like that? Like when I, when I came out of school, I started looking at, okay, well, I have low credit, yet I'm actually not even doing anything bad. But the problem is it's because I actually wasn't doing anything at all. So the first step is to actually start building your credit. There's two ways. Number one is you obviously get a credit card, you paid it off monthly. There's two types of credit cards. There's installment and then there's revolving. Revolving is you have a monthly kind of charge that comes back to you and then you say, oh, $500 and then you pay off the $500. The next month it's $460, blah, blah, blah. Installment is you have something big and you buy something big, it's either, you know, back in the day it was a very expensive TV or a car or a boat or something like that. And then you have, or student loans, you have a set amount and then you start chipping away at it. And usually it's the same amount every single month and you just pay it down, pay it down, pay it down, pay it down. Revolving is, it just, it just revolves, it's different, you pay it off every single month. So number one is, why is credit important? So first of all, you know, I have a, a ton of notes over here. Late payments and maxing out your credit card is not good. There's a percentage that they give you. They say, hey, listen, you know, up to $10,000, you're allowed to spend every single month. But if you have your max and you keep on hitting your max every single month, that means that that's not good because uh, credit card companies say, what is the percentage? You know, if you use 95% of the amount of credit available to you, that's not good because they're saying you're given $10,000 and you use $10,000 or $1,000 or whatever the amount is. Obviously late payments is terrible. I have two stories behind that. First one was actually a client that she had a, an installment where she pays the exact same, actually, no, 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 it was revolving, but it came out of her bank account every single month. So we were going through the process of buying everything else else and then the bank runs her credit literally the day before the closing literally the day before the closing and they say actually you have a 90 day late payment on your credit and she goes what are you talking about I, I pay this you know it's it's automatic and the thing was there was a glitch in Bank of America systems where the payment didn't go out Bank of America didn't want to take any fault for it so her credit dropped and the bank that was gonna lend her the money said, listen, you have this 90 day payment. It's, it says that you didn't pay it. She goes to Bank of America. They don't wanna say anything. So they say, well, actually this may have happened or this may not have happened. So we brought that letter to the lender and the lender said, okay, great, that's fine. But even, even in that case where she had the, the same amount of money paying down her credit card every single month, there was a glitch and it hurt. And they actually said, we're not gonna lend you the money because of it. So very important that you, you keep on top of your credit score. And we'll go over some resources to talk about it. So you have two types of, obviously when you're renting, that's something different because it's a landlord, they're gonna say, okay, that's great that you have a whatever amount score, but we're not gonna actually give you it at this rate or you're gonna have to put down more security because you have a bad credit score. So it's, it's very important when you're renting, it's more important when you're buying for two reasons. The bank looks at it, which is obviously interest rates and you know how much money you have to maybe put down or maybe you have to put money into that bank. You know, you have to hold this amount of money in the bank for a year or two years, but it's as important for a co-op because if, if a co-op sees that you're actually not spending your money responsibly, they're gonna say, you gotta put money in escrow or you gotta put it in some kind of account or pay maybe a year upfront of maintenance because they don't trust that you're gonna spend all of your money on time because it shows a history of you not spending your money on time, okay? That's the biggest thing. A lot of people are saying, well, why does credit matter? Because if I give you a dollar, how much, how do you spend that dollar? You know, is, is that dollar spent responsibly? Do you spend a dollar five? Do you spend a dollar 10? In other words, you're maxing out the amount of money that you get, so then you have to borrow against it, borrow against that dollar. So then the next time you get a dollar, you have to pay off the 10 cents and then bubble, you know. So credit report, obviously there's three types. 
And we'll go over this really quick. So obviously Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion are the three agencies. They pretty much are roughly around the, you know, they, they weigh it differently because they're obviously three different credit agencies, but they're roughly around the same. They see what credit cards you've opened, what accounts you've opened, you know, what your, what your actual payment history is on that, what's your revolving debt on that, how much percentage of the credit you use. And obviously on top of that, they go into the length of the credit. You know, when did you first open your, your first account and were you diligent with it? So credit score, it's, it's known as FICO. We'll go into the basics of that. Um, FICO, obviously it ranges from 300 to 850. A credit score of 400 and less is something you should really start repairing your credit. And it may take upwards of a year. Um, I actually had this in college, it, bring, it brings back memories. I had this in college, so I played Division II rugby, you know, just shout out to myself. And I got into, obviously, I got hurt, went to the emergency room, they looked at my hand, they looked at my knee, they looked at my head, went through an MRI, make sure that I was, I was good to go and I was pieced together. And that cost obviously X amount of dollars. I'm in college, so I'm not an independent contractor and things like that, which I am now. And they, so they sent a bill. It was, you know, obviously a co-payment, paid it off. But then another bill was sent to my house in college. And I already graduated at that time. That was like a year later. They said, oh, actually, we're gonna refix the charges or whatever. I was in New York City. I went to school in Pennsylvania. They sent it to that house. They sent one notice to that house. And I'm applying for my first apartment and they say, by the way, here's your credit report. And I was like, here's my credit report. I'm like, where does this come from? They say, oh, you actually have collections based on a medical, by the way, uh, medical is actually the largest bankruptcy in the United States. And obvious, for obvious reasons, because it, it just really adds up. But mine was, I think, like $450. It went into collections. The collections obviously was contacting me at the complete wrong address. Then it went into like, you know, just this whole area and this mess, and then my credit went down and everything else. It took me a year to repay or to, to build my credit back up. So this is what I recommend every single year. There's, there's a couple of, first of all, annualcreditreport.com is free and you're allowed every single year, once a year, to go in and check your credit score, all right? And that, that's free. I actually just recently did it and it kind of gives you a good idea, but not really. This is what I recommend is that you go on myfico.com, F-I-C-O, myfico.com, which is obviously the FICO score. And you check not only the credit, but it also on my FICO, it says, this is what you should do. You should build up more credit. You should take out a credit card or you should do something to either increase your score. It kind of gives you like recommendations on, on what to do, which is great because obviously it can only go up from there. 720 and higher is very healthy and in the lender's eyes, and I'm looking at this, it, it gives the lender and the co-op, which is very important because the, the bank is actually not as stringent as the co-op when it comes to financials, ironically enough. Here in New York City, it kind of saved New York City uh, in the last collapse because banks were lending at 100% or they would lend 100% plus a construction loan, so it was like 120% lending. But in New York City, the co-ops are like, no, you still have to put down 20%. Or condos are saying, you still have to put down 10%. So it kind of saved, you know, as much as we hate co-ops, I put it in quotes, it kind of saved New York City in 2000, well, kind of hit us a little bit later, 2010. But essentially, they, they look at it and they say, okay, this person is less likely to default on their payments and we'll offer you a better credit, excuse me, a better uh, rate when it comes to actually interest rates. So it behooves you, it's gonna save you money and it's less hassle when it comes to buying, all right? And then the, the last thing is, what if you have bad credit? Here, I have a couple of points right here. Number one is pay down the minimum balance and do it on time. All right, that, that's number one. You know, if you have, you know, I think that the range is, if you have $20,000, it's usually about a four to $500 minimum. I think that's it, roughly. And if you do the four to $500 minimum on $20,000, it's not, it's not a lot because your interest rate is probably 18%, 16%. But the problem is, if you're not paying it down at all, that looks terrible. Yes, you have really high amount of credit used, but the problem is if you're not actually paying anything down, 
that looks terrible. <laughs> that looks like you don't even care and you're probably gonna default on the next loan. So first of all, pay it down on time. Have it automated out of your, your checking or debit, uh, debit account. Reduce the balances. This is the biggest thing is that you have, you know, I wrote it down here, is that you have to plan, you have to have a budget which says, you know, here's my rent, here's my, you know, food and everything else, my gym costs, have all these costs. And, but number on top of that is pay down the highest interest credit cards first. And I, I say that because if you pay, you know, going back to the earlier example, is that if you pay, say on $20,000, if you pay about $600, probably $350 of that is actual interest, which is not good. So you're spending $600 out of your, your monthly checking account to make sure that your, your credit is good, but about $300 to $350 of that, so in other words, about 50, 55% of that is actually interest, which is not paying down the principal. So in other words, on 20% or $20,000, that, that's the, the amount of money that you owe, okay? And if you paid it out in full, that's obviously just taking the entire amount of principal. But all of that interest is how the credit cards make their money. It's sort of prey on people that are just not good at doing that. So here we go. Don't use another line of credit. In other words, if you're already high on your credit, don't open another, another credit card because there's, there's a couple of reasons. I'm gonna talk about it right now, which is it's, it's another inquiry on your credit, which is not good. You get an inquiry anytime that you go to a bank for a loan, when you go to get something, opening a credit card, a boat, a house, anything, they just inquire, which is not good. If you have a lot of inquiries on your credit, that means that there's collection agencies, potentially, or a lot of credit card agencies that, that wanna know your credit, which means that you're kind of borrowing against what you owe in the future. So you wanna have it below 90%. So in other words, if you have a $100 credit limit, you wanna spend $90 or below, that's max. Available credit, you're not, if you're anything above that, you're not an ideal candidate and your credit's gonna get hit. And then this is the last thing I say is that opening a new credit card is gonna lower the average age of your accounts. I talked about that in the beginning. So in other words, if you have an account that's open for 10 years, that's great. If you have an account that's open for 10 months, that's not good because that means that you had to borrow for something. If it's a house, it's a little bit different, but if you had to borrow for buying a TV or a car or something like that, you know, car is a little bit different, but they're, they're finding out, okay, they just bought a car or they just opened it up a new credit card. I don't know about giving them the best rate when it comes to buying, a co-op is gonna see that as well. And additionally, as I talked about, is that an inquiry on your credit report can account for a 10% decrease in your, and it's temporary, 10% decrease in your credit score. So highly recommend that you get this handled first. This is one of the biggest things that uh, nobody talks about is credit because this is the reason is that if you go in to buy a co-op and your interest rate is high, that's gonna hurt your debt to income ratio, okay? That, that's a totally different conversation. We're gonna be talking about that at another time. We're kind of going since it is swung a little bit towards the buyer's market right now. We're talking about obviously that. So if you are looking to buy, uh, definitely give us a call. Credit is one of the biggest things. Credit, there, there's only three areas. How much money do you make? How much money do you have in your credit? Those are the three areas. Yes, they're big, and that's pretty much all of life <laughs> right there when it comes to wealth. How much do you make, how much do you have, and what's your credit? So obviously we we're talking about credit. The other one is debt to income ratio, which is how much you make as opposed to how much leaves your bank account. And the third is how much money do you have left over that's known as post-closing liquidity. So you know, obviously that's real estate talk for you need to sit down with your real estate agent before you actually go in to purchase a home. So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Uh, we're gonna be going through October, through November into what's the, the value of actually not only buying, but buying correctly. A lot of people say, I don't need a real estate agent. And I agree, some people, if you've, if, if you've bought, or you're a realtor, or you're a mortgage banker, or broker, or something like that, or you're a financial advisor and you understand the process, that's fine, go you know without a broker. But the problem is something like this could actually save you a lot of money if I say, hey listen, let's wait six months, let's repair your credit, let's talk to an agency, see if we can pay down a couple of these high interest debts. Here's, here's the last example I'll give, which is I had a, a client that, uh, they had student loan debt, and they said, do we leave that on our credit report or do we pay that down with cash? That is, a, that, that is case by case because you're lowering the amount of money that you have in the bank, which co-ops love. Co-ops love lots of money in the bank. But the problem is, if you have a really high amount of debt, they don't like that. So it's kind of this, this you know, 
where do you find the equilibrium? So this is what I said, pay down a lot of it so you have it and you still have enough, okay? A real estate agent that's not a professional that doesn't know is going to have no idea what to do in that circumstance. That's why you have to go with a professional. Don't go with your, your nephew Tom or your Aunt Millie just because they're, they're family or they're friends. You have to go with a professional. This is the biggest purchase of your life, likely, unless you're going to be buying a company. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Real estate is gonna be the biggest purchase of your life. So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. If you want any topics to talk about, obviously also leave that in the comments below. Uh, we're gonna be coming back uh, next week and we're gonna be going down this, this buying path. So we're gonna get deeper and deeper into it. So leave your comments below. Talk to you guys soon. Have an amazing week.